Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. Today is a very special day in the annals of Americana and of the world, I guess is what yeah. we want to say. And that is the commemoration of Midway, the Battle of Midway, as well as the fall of Rome and the 75th commemoration of D-Day. Yeah. So we are going to take a look at the World War, or wars. And my guest is Donald Kelper, who is my favorite historian, and the one that you know that I always go to when I want to talk war. Yeah. And let me tell you one of the special things about Donald. Uh, other than being my friend, and you all know that I only talk to good friends. But Donald's father was the first Marine officer to be killed in um, the Vietnam, Vietnam War. Vietnam War. Yeah. And it was a date that the Americans kind of pretend like didn't happen, because he was lost before the date that he was, the Amer he Americans... Was, yeah, he was killed prior to the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution. Right. So, yeah. anyway, let's talk about this World War. Okay. Uh, because the American history that we are taught uh, begins on December 7th. Yeah. Which is a long way from the very beginning, and I did make notes of the beginning. Yeah, there was um, the, the war, what we commonly know today as the Second World War, um, actually commenced in 1937 with the Japanese invasion of China. China. Mm -hmm. uh, That's the official yeah, day. Yeah, after the, the so-called Marco Polo Bridge incident. Yes. Um, where the, the, what it was is became a full-scale military invasion of uh, China by the Japanese Empire, uh, a war of conquest, um, a rather vicious war that that was really uh, most people don't realize when you know um, people have heard about the 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 rape of Na Nanjing, Nanjing, yes, uh, or what they also called back then Nanking, was uh, actually took place in 1937. It did not happen. Uh, right. The, 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 the so-called official date for the Second World War's commencement was September, September 1st, 1939, which was uh, Nazi Germany's invasion of Poland. However, you know, this is, this is a really Eurocentric view of it that. It is. Because... <laughs> Full-scale fighting was actually happening for two years prior, prior well to, over two years prior to uh, the, the start of the war in Europe. Well, now, I found one really interesting. It says, many historians believe Second World War began in uh, September 18, 1931. Well, that the was Japanese the invasion of, of, of occupation, occupation of, 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 of Asia. Of, Manchu of well, Manchuria, yeah. which they renamed... Um, it was a puppet state called Manchukuo. Yes. Now, if anybody who's ever seen the movie, uh, Bernardo Bertolucci's movie, The Last Emperor, mm -hmm. was based on, on Pu Yi. And Pu Yi was the last emperor of China, but he was also served as the, the puppet emperor of Manchukuo for the, for the Japanese. Well, and, and that's why he, you know, he, his, his name in Chinese history is somewhat... You know, yes. it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's, Vague. A, it, well, it's a mixed <laughs> blessing. I mean, he, when he died, he was simply a civilian. I mean, they allowed him to, you know, I mean, he was, you know, the, the, the Chinese uh, communist government uh, allowed him to, you know, live out his days in relative mm -hmm. peace, yep. but he was, he was not a, uh, you know, he, they, they preferred that they actually preferred that people forget about him. Yeah. Well, now, if we really go, go back, mm -hmm. um, and my first introduction to going that far back was doing the study of Sun Yat-sen, and 
the intellectuals of Asia came together at a conference in Nagasaki, and the whole idea was to get the Europeans to go home, the yeah. Westerners. And it seemed to me that if we look at right then, from that point on, where, you know, uh, you know all the, the horrors that the Europeans had done with mm -hmm. these battles, but they wanted them to go home. Well, and was, Korea, yeah. they wanted them to go home. Vietnam, just go a hundred well, years. The thing was, is in Korea. Korea was actually uh, part of the Japanese Empire. It was after uh, the Russo-Japanese War of 1904-1905. The Chinese kind of gave it up. Uh, it, and was went a, home. it was a somewhat <laughs> vassal. It was Korea functioned as kind of a vassal state of the Chinese Empire until the Sino-Japanese War of 1895. And then after China was defeated by Japan in that war, Japan took Formosa, which is now Taiwan, uh, which we know today as Taiwan. And uh, they basically got the Chinese to get out of Korea. And Korea kind of existed in this semi-autonomous existence for uh, better part of about a decade but and then they did, just don't the you Japanese love, don't you annexed just love it. that the that, Japanese annexed it. That the Japanese and the Chinese over here have a war so they go to your house to have the war. Now, yeah, they, they 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 were um I mean well the Japanese the, the Chinese Empire at that point was um if you go back even farther to uh the Opium War of 1839-1842 between Great Britain and, right. and China, in which uh, China's status as a power was pretty much punctured because the British really well, beat them badly. They did. That's when they took Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the whole war was literally fought over opium because the Chinese didn't want the British Empire selling opium to... The the Chinese. Them, and the British were like, no, and they actually forced it on them. And this was the, the, the really beginning in, a, you know, while there was a European presence in Asia uh, for some time, you know, probably, you know, almost close to 150 years yes. or so, uh, this was the first time that, that Europeans actually actively moved into Asia and started annexing territory. And, and now but, where this French, was, was, yeah, yeah and well, the, the French, French came in later. Vietnam. Yeah, the French came later in Indochina, mm -hmm. and, and they were, and part of it was because that was, was an area that was considered part of Chinese sphere of influence, but with the defeat of China, the Europeans moved in. Um, Britain had a huge in, oh, uh, interest in, well, they had a huge presence in India at the and time. And the tea. And, and they had... Uh, you know, the, 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 the imperialist movement at that point in the 19th century just really just blossomed and the Europeans annexed. I mean, you had the Dutch in what is present day Indonesia. Mm -hmm. You had the British in Singapore, which right. was their big base there in their big area and Malaya. Hong Kong. And then you had Hong Kong and you had the French in Indochina. Mm -hmm. You had the British in, in Burma, which is now Myanmar. And you had, uh, you had the Americans who replaced the Spanish in the Philippines. And now, ironically, in American history, we have, while everybody was taught the Spanish-American War, nobody was really, I know I was never taught about it. I never learned about the, 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 what they used to call the Philippine Insurrection, which is now more known as the Philippine-American War, War. Yeah. from 1899 to 1902, in which... You know, I mean, we, the American well, they, casualties in the Spanish-American War were like 500 dead. The American death toll in the war in the Philippines was close to 10,000. And probably about 400,000 Filipinos died in that war. Oh, it was awful. And, it, and, it was, and so this was, this was the setup for what happened with World War II and the movement in Asia to... You know, they wanted to get rid of the Westerners, and the Japanese sought to capitalize on that yes. because the Japanese Empire was, what, but uh, in, in, um, you know, becoming increasingly militarist. Sun, Sun Yat-sen's writings, which are vast, but they had this conference, at, and all of the people, including the Philippines, the intellectuals, come together at conference in Nagasaki. And yes, 
This is what we want. We want Asia for the Asians. And uh, yeah, Nagasaki, yeah. and that included Japan. And in yeah. his writing, see the thing is that Japan but he, wanted right. Asia for the Japanese. And that's what, <laughs> you know? in in his writings, he says how crushed and disappointed he was because he felt betrayed by the Japanese because he thought they were all together, and now no, they, they become the the imperialists. They were, in, they were an imperialist power by that point. Oh, they yeah. had already taken over. And they were considered, uh, they, were, they were a growing military power. Now, the interesting thing for me was the fact that the Japanese had come together with the Germans to build a new Japan. This was... Well, there was a, it was, that, that, was a, that, that was an alliance. Yeah, that, 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 to become an industrial... That was an alliance of convenience that, where, that, was, where, where that happened. That was well before... We got into any war. Yeah, that was that that the 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 alliance between Nazi Germany and Imperial well, this Japan was before was, Nazi Germany. Well, the Germans had had now now actually in World War One, Japan fought on the side of the Allies. Right. But again, it was an opportunistic uh, war because um, the Japanese uh, kicked the Germans out. Now the Germans used to my, what is present day Micronesia. All they used the, to be German. Yes. The Japanese kicked them out of Micronesia, kicked the Germans out of Micronesia and took Micronesia for itself. Um, and, now, but after and they the militarized Vers it. Yeah, but the Versailles Treaty, which, quote, yeah. uh, gave, I, I, this bothers me, the islands in the Pacific that had belonged well, to the Germans to the, ceded it to the Japanese. Well, How can did. you cede somebody else? Well, this is this was the common way that things were done back then, and it's and it's best when discussing that we 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 run into the weeds a lot of times in history when we try to apply present day sensibilities to past actions because people, for whatever their reason, a hundred years ago didn't think that way. No, they didn't. And, and in you fact, still had they a concept of, I mean, white supremacy was, was still very much a big thing. Most of Africa, there were only two independent countries in Africa, Ethiopia and Liberia. Right. The rest of Africa was, was under European, colonial rule. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and this, was, this, was, this was the basis for heading into World War II. Uh, a good quarter of the map was under European rule. The British Empire was still a very powerful oh, yes. entity, and, now, and they ruled close to one quarter of the globe. You but, know. Well, now one of the places here, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll get it. Anyway, uh, there's a the Japanese and the Chinese and the Germans are working together. This was uh, before December seven, and they wanted the Japanese to take Singapore and some of these other British, so that the Americans would pay more attention to... Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they were... Rather than, a, than fight with them yeah. in, in Germany. And... Yeah, there was that, a big thing that they had. Now, what the, the thing that they didn't know is that in the Atlantic Charter, uh, or the Atlantic meetings that were held well before Pearl Harbor in August of 1941 between Franklin Roosevelt and Winston Churchill, the decision was already made that in the event of war with Japan and Germany, that Germany would be given first priority, right? Uh, regardless of whatever. Now, now the thing was is that once war commenced with the attack on Pearl Harbor, uh, Americans, for obvious reasons, they were more concerned about they were more concerned about uh, um, the Japanese and the uh, and 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 the alarming gains that they were making in 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 the Pacific and in Asia. Um, they were. Uh, and that led up to the point where you had Midway. Um, prior to Midway was actually a, what we look up at was really it was a it was more of a a, a more a more a, a morale booster for us was the Doolittle's raid on mm -hmm. Tok on Tokyo in Japan from uh, the aircraft carrier uh, USS Hornet, which sailed within six hundred miles of of Japan itself, and then launched B twenty five bombers. But the thing was, is the Japanese at that point saw the, foresaw the vulnerability of their home islands, and that was the impetus for the attack on Midway, which was to be the first step of a prospective invasion of Hawaii. Yeah. And that's what led up to 
up up to the Battle of Midway, which this today is the 75th anniversary of the battle's end, actually. And um, and it was brutal. Well, it was a, it was a brutal naval victory. The Japanese sent an overwhelming fleet of uh, they had. Uh, you know, it was it was an invasion fleet, and and it was what they hoped to do was lure the Americans into an unequal battle because they 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 did they were confident that they had naval superiority and the Japan. But the thing was, is that the Americans had broken the Japanese code, and so the Americans had kind of pretty much guessed that Midway was the target, mm -hmm. and so they were waiting for the Japanese. I mean, so the Japanese thought, here they are, they're going to lure the Americans out of, out of Pearl Harbor in Honolulu into an unequal naval battle. Instead, they walked into an ambush. So, wow. So let's take a break. Okay. And then we'll come back to right that point. Yeah. Okay? Okay. Be right back. Aloha. I'm Cynthia Sinclair. And I'm Tim Apicella. We are hosts here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of its supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thanks so much. <laughs> Aloha and mabuhai. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming Salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. Hi, I'm Marcia, and we are back. And I am talking with my dear friend and Donald Kelper, who has acted as my historian for years. Yeah, okay. And today we are talking about World War II. Uh, the Battle of Midway, yeah. and uh, D-Day, yeah. uh, the fall of Rome, and yeah. D-Day in Normandy. Yeah. So well, we were talking about the Pacific, about the Japanese in the mm -hmm. Pacific. Yeah. And on December 7, most of us are not taught this. We are taught about Pearl Harbor only. December 7, the Japanese invaded Hong Kong, Guam, Malaysia, and the Philippines. Well, they invaded, they also invaded uh, the Dutch East Indies, which was Indonesia. Yes. Now, their, their real target was Indonesia because Indonesia had a vast amount of resources. The whole point of what the Japanese did was to buy them, when they attacked Pearl Harbor, was to buy themselves time to embark on a, on a swift war of conquest and then present basically the United States with a fait accompli. And then... Uh, but as I said, what happened was, is with Doolittle's raid on, to on, on, on Japan in April of 1942, now which coincidentally was the month in which the American army in the Philippines surrendered to the Japanese, and that today remains, that is the only American command to ever surrender to a foreign power in wartime. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> and it was... Uh, but that was brutal. That well, war well, the, was well, the, horrible. The, the thing was, is yes, it was. It was. But what what this was is this sets this up here to where you know America's on the defensive, right? Uh, you know, we're, but the, the 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 fleet is still you know they're they're based at Pearl Harbor, and what the Japanese wanted to do was lure the fleet out from Honolulu to lure them into an unequal battle in which they could bring their superior resources to bear, which was this overwhelming fleet that was approaching Midway. But the Americans were waiting for them. And the Japanese didn't realize that the Americans were actually at Midway. Wait, I mean, the fleet had actually moved out of Honolulu and was at Midway waiting for them. And uh, when the battle began on June 2nd with air raids on um, the... Uh, uh, Japanese air raids on the Midway Islands, on the on the on the on the airfields at at Midway, and then it 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 
it broke out in earnest. And let's say, that <coughs> just for anyone that doesn't know, Midway's name is exactly that. It is Midway. Yeah, it is Midway. It's part of the Hawaiian Islands. It's the eastern, it, it's the westernmost part of the Hawaiian the, Islands, the Hawaiian Island chain. But in, in the vast yeah, Pacific, yeah, yeah, that's uh, it. Yeah, it's about, uh, it's about 1,150 miles to the northwest of Honolulu, yeah. but it's, it's the far west of the Hawaiian Islands, so it's actually in the Hawaiian Island chain. Um, but what happened there was uh, the the Japanese, um, while their while their aircraft were out hammering Midway, uh, especially with the four carriers, the uh, assaults assault waves of assault, uh, you know, dive bombers were launched against the Japanese carriers from three American carriers that were there. The, the Americans were outnumbered. I mean, they, they were, they were, they were, they, they were on the defensive, but yet Admiral Nimitz took a big gamble on there and he launched this, these, these waves against the carriers while the Japanese planes were off over Midway. And they caught the Japanese napping. And within 20 minutes, which was happened at, on this day in 1942, um, all three Japanese carriers were hit and sunk. Within 20 minutes, wow. they were hit. And the Japanese had four carriers. Three of them got hit, they were sunk. And then shortly thereafter, the fourth carrier got hit and sunk. And so they lost all four of their carriers in this attack group. And that's what forced the Japanese withdrawal was that one strike mm -hmm. it was that it was a it was a big gamble on nimitz's part and and nimitz lost one of his own carriers he had three carriers he lost the yorktown at at midway, midway. Mm -hmm. that um it was because uh, the japanese found that carrier and hit it and 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 it was and it it's was sunk now the the but midway was a decisive american victory uh was Co commonly considered the turning point in the Pacific War. I was going to say, for, for those of us that were, that, that I think it was the energy, the thought that, hey, we, yeah. we're, we're, we're yeah. on to something Most people here. didn't realize at the time, we look at it in ret retrospect, we have, yeah. the, we, have the, we have the advantage of historic hindsight, but we realize that that was, that was a crippling blow for the Japanese. Mm -hmm. I mean, Midway losing those carriers really hurt them because these were ships that they couldn't readily replace no, you can't and and it was that that 20 minute shot where they hit the carriers was really the turning point in the in the pacific war at that point the japanese in the pacific thereafter were on the defensive so that was on there and then you now what we have here is now we're into the battle of um you know, D -Day. which leads now is this tomorrow is the 75th anniversary of the invasion of Normandy, commonly known as D-Day. Um, First, tell us where is Normandy? Normandy is on the north coast of France. Uh, it is um, it is an area that was uh, the, the Germans at the time, um, the, the Americans had spent the better part of, of a few years amassing a huge uh, a huge invasion force. I mean, they were basically, they were going for the knockout blow against Germany. And the British didn't really want to do that. The British were actually, they were content to fight it out in the Mediterranean. Because the British have always had the hankering for going for the soft underbelly. But they had, they had, they had serious reservations about attacking across the channel directly. And, uh, but once the United States committed to doing that and they said, we're going to do this, we, we, and, and the British agreed, okay, well, if you're going to do that, then we're going to go with you. The, um, in June 19, on June 5th, 1944, which is actually today, was the invasion actually commenced because it was uh, three divisions of Allied paratroopers hit Normandy to secure the backside for the invasion that came in. The first wave that happened on D-Day itself, uh, the Allies, um, this, and this, were, this was Americans, British, and Canadian troops, um, were, uh, they landed, they managed to land about 156,000 men and secure a beachhead. And despite 
tremendous. I mean, most people who've seen the movie, I think a lot of people have seen the movie Saving Private Ryan, with the opening scene You're was right. Omaha, Omaha Beach. Beach. And Omaha Beach is within military lore, is one of those things where it was a horrific, uh, a, a horrific battle. It was a, uh, the Americans lost, um, lost thousands of men just on that beach alone. They were, they were, uh, it was, it was. The 5,000 ships, 11,000 airplanes, yeah. 150,000 soldiers from the United States, Britain, and Canada. Yeah. Yeah, they were. They landed at six different areas mm -hmm. in Normandy, and the the beach. And there were actually uh, two of them were consolidated. There was Utah Beach, Omaha Beach, and then Gold Jor, uh, Gold Juno and Sword. Mm -hmm. Gold Juno and Sword were the British beach, the British and Canadian beaches. That those were the ones where the British and Canadian troops landed. The Americans landed at Omaha and Utah Beach. Um, Omaha was the closest run thing, and the Americans just, the Americans got pounded. Oh, I mean, yeah. the, the one thing that ultimately, and you had to say it, is like, and this is what just shows how awful war is, is that um, the Americans were able to land troops faster than the Germans could cut them down. And, uh, but it, they, they mowed a lot down. Oh. I mean, it was, uh, it reached the point where there was a British battleship that, they saw what was happening to the Americans, and the British captain actually brought his battleship in close, almost in direct contravention to the orders from his own commander, and shelled the, the, the back where the Germans were, the line, because the Americans were stuck literally on the beach, and they were getting pounded. And it was that British, the, 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 the British being able to bring their, their big guns onto the fortifications that were overlooking Omaha Beach that were able to get Americans the time necessary to land sufficient number of troops to break through and, and get, get, get by those initial German fortifications that were just did hell on them. So it was... Well, um, let's real quick, we only mm -hmm. have a little bit of time left. Yeah. Now this was the turning point in the in the war in Europe. Yeah, and well, so this was it's it's recognized as a turning point. It's a, it's a, it's a it's a really, significant moment. It's a moment, but how much longer did the war last? From the war the lasted another eleven months, and the main thing was that the, the thing was is that this gave the Allies a toehold in France. Now the Battle of Normandy lasted for six weeks. And just so people realize what a slugfest this was, is that the United States suffered 141,000 casualties at Normandy, including 65,000 dead. Okay, I mean, when you consider that, we lost 58,000 in the entire Vietnam War. We lost 33,000 in the entire Korean War. We lost 65,000 dead and 140,000 casualties in total in six weeks slugging it out with the Germans. And now the British and Canadians lost 93,000. You know, I mean, so this was a bloody battle. The Germans lost 400,000. This was, and I sh need to point out, uh, because we always forget about, this was France. And this was a fairly well-populated area of France and 20,000 French civilians died in the crossfire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now. We, we're just about out of time. Mm -hmm. Of course, I was a child during World War II, and I remember there were no men. Every, there were no men in town yeah. because everybody was in the war. Yeah. And there were 16 million Americans in WW2. Yeah. 16 million. So yeah. when I read that, I thought, well, no wonder I didn't see any men when I was a child. Yeah. Well, what happened was that was our peak when we, we were able to mobilize a vast force. Oh. My. And that was really what overwhelmed Nazi Germany, because Nazi Germany was very well armed. Nazi Germany had superior firepower to us. We overwhelmed them uh, at, in France. We just, we were able to put in, but the losses we suffered in that final year of the war, especially in France and, and up in the final 11 months, Germany surrendered in May 1945. But the, the losses that Americans occurred, People should remember that in the, in the war, we fought in the war for about three and a half years. 80% um, of our losses happened in the final year of the war. 
And it was because of this, this slugfest that we got into with the Germans on there. And, and we, 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 we took some big losses, but we, we persevered. And that's what makes what happened there and why Tom Brokaw calls them the greatest generation and not without reason. They were, you know, they, they, the destruction of Nazi Germany was the moral imperative of your parents and my grandparents' time. Yes. And we need to remember that. My father that was, and all of his brothers. Yeah, yeah. As, as luck, I shouldn't say luck, yeah. but they were all in, yeah. um, in the Pacific, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. But yes, it yeah. was brutal. But, and but the destruction of the Axis powers, uh, the defeat of Nazi Germany and Imperial, Imperial Japan was the moral imperative of, of that generation's time. And it was... Uh, it was a close run thing. I mean, yeah. we, we, we need to recognize that. We need to recognize the contribution of our allies to that effort, because without our allies making the sacrifices they did, oh. we probably would not have won that war. No. Well, it is, I think it's time, our time is up. Okay. But thank you always for oh, being time. my resident historian. I love it, I love it, I love it. And again, being a child through this, I have memories of all of this that, that only children, because oh, yeah. it was there, it was in front of us. Everything was rationed, and what news we got was always about what's going on on the front. So, yeah. again, thank okay. you so much. Well, thank you for having me. And we'll see you soon. Will do. Okay. Aloha.